Hello and welcome. This is the Education Committee in the Vermont House of Representatives on Thursday, January 6th. And we are starting our discussion on uh, the chapter 11 in uh, Title 16 that has to do with school governance. Um, we're looking at some updates to this, Think Act 46. And I wanted to hear first from, um, Ledge, from uh, Ledge Council. Uh, Elizabeth St. James, who will help us with a little background on why we're here and why we're discussing this. So thank you, Beth, for your help here. Thank you, Chair Webb. Good morning, Beth St. James uh, from Leg Legislative Council. I am uh, going to kick things off today with actually just a primer on some terms uh, that will hopefully be familiar to all of you, but are integral, integral um, and foundational to understanding why we are here and talking about uh, amendments to chapter 11. Um, and then I believe the Agency of Education is going to get a little bit more in depth on the how we got here and the why. Um, so with that, I'm going to attempt to share my screen for the first time on Zoom ever. So please, your patience, I appreciate it. I came from the executive branch, and so I am a whiz at Teams um, and just getting up to speed on Zoom. So let me find my pretty picture for you. We're education. We're all about learning. <laughs> okay. There we go. Can you see my screen? Should see a PDF that says Union School Districts? Yes, okay. Um, so uh, chapter 11 uh, talks about the uh, formation and government governance of Union School Districts. It is, um, I believe, Yes, the title of current chapter 11 is Union Schools and School Districts and Joint Schools. So having an understanding of what a union school district is foundational to uh, the work that we are potentially and, and most likely going to be doing this session. So just a brief primer, um, and hopefully you can refer to this um, when we are um, in the trenches um, actually doing the work on chapter 11. Um, so a school district is, um, uh, includes, it's a, kind of an all-encompassing term, town school districts, union school districts, interstate school districts, city school districts, unified union school districts, um, and incorporated school districts. Um, so the term school district um, tends to be thrown around and could mean many different things. School districts, um, all of them, are uh, independent municipalities. So they are separate and distinct um, municipalities from the towns that they serve. That means that they can levy taxes. Uh, a school district uh, could be one town, it could be many towns, it could be uh, portions of a couple different towns. It's governed by one publicly elected board uh, and uh, it manages and proposes the budget, which is voted on and um, voted up or down by the voters. So under school district or included in the term school district is a union school district, which means two or more school districts located in two or more towns that merged into one district. And that is responsible for the education of students in all grades for which it is organized regardless of the town the student resides in. That's kind of a broad term. And then within union school district, there are a couple different types of union school districts. And when we get to, uh, if we get to it today, um, uh, I plan to share uh, a kind of a table of contents or an outline of what the proposal um, for the rewrite of chapter 11 may look like. You will see that um, there is a, a big distinction in the work uh, that is proposed to be done on chapter 11 between a union elementary and a union high school district. And I'll talk about this little picture here uh, and a unified union school district. Both of these, the union elementary or union high school district and a unified union school district are school districts 
and union school districts. So there's multiple layers of uh, terms here. And uh, the work in chapter 11 gets uh, down to uh, the, the bare bones of each of these terms as far as what it takes to form them, uh, explore the formation of them, form them, and then how do they run once they are formed. So understanding kind of the makeup of each of these different terms is important. Uh, so the first type of union school district um, that we'll talk about is a union elementary and a union high school district. So this means a union school district. So that's a school district, multiple school districts that have merged into one that's organized to provide for the education of students residing in um, two or more towns in fewer than all grades. So a union elementary would provide, a uh, school district would provide um, education for the elementary grades and a union high school district would provide um, education for the uh, high school grades. But uh, if, if there's a distinction that if it's a union elementary or a union high school district, the name implies that it's not, apply, uh, not um, uh, organized to provide for education um, for uh, all grades, right? It's just elementary or just high school. So this visual is meant to just give you um, an idea of what that might look like. So um, town school district A, it's a um, uh, school district that operates grades um, pre-K through six in town A. And then you've got town school district B, operates grades uh, pre-K through six in town B. And then town school district C operates grades uh, pre-K through six in town C, they would merge, they would be the member districts and send all of their high school students to a new school district, the Union High School District D, that operates grades seven through 12. It just so happens this Union High School District is operated in a building located in town C. So there's um, towns involved um, as far as the location of schools and the, the people who live in them, but a union high school district is made up of member school districts who funnel their students to that union district um, for the grades it is um, organized to provide for. Any questions on that? If we think of examples, I think this might be something like um, Janice District, Richmond, I think is considered a unified union school district. That so un unified union is next. Oh, okay, excuse me. Nope, that's okay. Yeah. Um, and I, um, I can provide some kind of basic examples of it, um, but I, uh, did not come prepared with a bunch of Vermont examples, and I'm happy to do that when we get into the nitty gritty of walking I think through. Having a, I think having a couple of examples is actually helpful. Okay. Just um, for each area. Yep. So um, I will um, work on providing that. For, um, Donna may, in her presentation, she might give some live examples of why we need this rewrite that might involve the explanation or um, specific examples of specific school districts. Um, but uh, if she does not go into that amount of detail, then I am happy to, um, in the next presentation on this topic, replace these arbitrary A, B, and C with actual Vermont towns. And then we have a unified union school district. So it's a, a union school district. So it's uh, multiple school districts that have merged into one that provide for the education for all of their, uh, for all grades. So instead of having sending districts, those districts all collapse into one unified union school district. So town A, town B and town C send all of their students to the Unified Union School District and the schools that are operated in that district. So it operates for all grades. And it can do that by maintaining schools, by tuitioning, or by a hybrid, maintaining or operating some schools and tuitioning for some grades. But they provide for the education of all uh, grades within that town. 
these are school districts. So they have the same um, characteristics as the general term school district. They are independent municipalities. Um, they um, are governed by a board uh, and uh, they propose the budget, which is voted up or down. Um, and you'll see as we get into chapter 11, the makeup of those boards and who's doing that voting may vary depending on whether it's a union elementary and union high school or a unified union school district. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen now. Does anyone have any questions? Sorry, any, any questions from anybody? I know we've got a wonderful map. I was just looking for it that, that broke down the, the districts and, and we'll see if we can locate that map. I, I find that really helpful in this conversation to help ground us a little bit. But thank yes, you. I don't think I've um, gotten my hands on an updated map, um, mm -hmm. but I, will, I can work with the agency um, on making sure that we have the most updated map as we go forward for visuals. Great. It had, and it had, it had, um, it, the map actually had pre-K uh, mapped on it. It had the CTE centers on it and it had the school districts and, and, you know, SUs and unified districts all organized. It was a really great map and, and maybe AOE can help us find that map. I think Emily, you found, you have found it for me a few times. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. And then I just briefly before um, we I turn it over to the agency, I just want to um, not included in Chapter 11, go uh, governed by uh, Chapter 7 in Title 16. I just want to briefly mention supervisory unions, because that's another term that um, can get confusing when we're talking about school districts. So a supervisory union is actually created by the State Board of Education. And it's an administrative planning and educational service unit. Um, so it uh, in statute is responsible for a number of administrative responsibilities. It does not have um, its own, uh, it, it does adopt a budget, but it is sent through to each school district that it um, supervises and provides administrative services for. Um, and uh, I think that the, the, the tricky thing here is that supervisory unions uh, usually are created and encompass and provide planning services for um, several different districts, but a supervisory union can also be uh, a supervisory uh, entity, the administrative planning unit for one district, if it's large enough that that makes sense, um, that they have uh, enough capacity and the district is large enough to warrant a supervisory union for that one district. So for example, Burlington school district is one school district with one supervisory union or the supervisory union um, only supervises uh, or is only responsible for the Burlington school district. Um, and we call that a supervisory district. So if it's one supervisory union, up, um, uh, or if the supervisory union is providing services and uh, administrative and planning services. So they do things like establishing and um, maintaining uh, standards for curriculum. Uh, they are involved in special education planning, um, maintenance of, um, uh, buildings in the supervisory unit. And again, this is an entity that's created by the State Board of Education and can be modified by the State Board of Education. But if it's big enough, if the district, if a district is large enough to have one supervisory union, we would then call that a supervisory district. So at play here and terms you will see over and over and over again when we get into actual um, actually looking at uh, the rewrite of chapter 11, which today stands at um, about 120 pages, is um, uh, school district, union school district, and then under, uh, you know, within that union school district is union elementary school district, union high school district, 
um, and then unified union school district. And then in the back of your mind, there's also, um, you know, when we're looking at live examples, how does a supervisory union fit into that? Um, so that's a, a very basic foundational piece that I'm sure most of you are already familiar with. I'm sure I'm the one this is all newest to. Um, um, so at this point, I think, um, Chair Webb, it's really up to you on how you want the flow of the meeting to go. I can um, present uh, the proposed table of contents, but I think it might make more sense to hear from the agency on why, why that table of contents exists. Right. I think what, what you're helping us, us understand is, uh, and I think that supervisory unions were created in what, in like 1900 something, um, and how complex, emotional, and uh, uh, exciting anything to do with schools can be, and over, over the years since we created public education. Um, Representative Conlon. Uh, thanks. Just a quick uh, definition and chapter question. It, when you use the term supervisory district, does that also tend to not reside in chapter 11? And is a unified union district also a supervisory district? Great question. So um, supervisory unions are governed by chapter seven in title 16. Um, so the um, chapter 11 currently in current law does not define supervisory union. That definition is in chapter seven. Um, and the rewrite, there is a section that addresses supervisory unions and adjusting them for new um, school districts, but no definition of that in, in chapter 11 specifically. I was asking about the term supervisory district. Yep. And so supervisory district also, um, I believe, is defined in... Um, Chapter seven, I can pull that up. Supervisory district. Yes, supervisory district is um, defined in uh, title 16 in section uh, 261C. Okay, so we're, uh, just to, in how we use those terms, mm -hmm. if we're sort of referring to um, a unified union district, that, that's a little bit more accurate than calling it a supervisory district. It depends. Um, and um, please, uh, anyone from the agency, correct me if I get this wrong, um, but a unified union school district could be large enough to warrant being part of one supervisory union. And so you've got one school district under a supervisory union, it would then become a supervisory district. A unified union school district could be small enough to be a part of a supervisory um, union okay. made up of right. multiple school districts of which it is one. Does that okay, make sense? I can actually think of one off the top of my head. Thank okay. you, that, uh, that's, that's very helpful. Great. Thank you. And we have all of these models, I'm sure, for, for reasons that go back through history. Um, so Emily Simmons, General Counsel at the Agency of Education. I, I'm also really thinking that right now we're heading this as chapter 11, and I'm, it sounds like that's not the correct title for what we're doing. At some point, we'll have a bill and we'll have a, 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 a number there, but we might want to think about what we're calling this versus chapter 11. But please welcome Emily Simmons. Nice to see you again. Hello, thank you so much for inviting us here today. I Really, my only role is to point out the folks who are here as resources to you for this conversation. So primarily Donna Russo-Savage, staff attorney from the Agency of Education and our governance expert. Donna has about a page of written testimony to go over with you and, and you all know that um, Donna is the absolute expert at the agency and is the um, person who's responsible for all the actual years of work at this point to bring this project of some technical and necessary rewrites of chapter 11 to you um, so that you could consider it in bill form. And also I'm really pleased that state board member Kim Gleason is able to be with you today. The agency and the state board are working really collaboratively on this project. So I wanted to make sure that you had a voice from the state board 
um, to speak to these issues as well. So at this point, Madam Chair, if it's okay with you, I'll turn our presentation over to Donna Russo-Savage. Thank you and welcome Donna Russo-Savage. Just to yeah, I'm sorry, stop. I was having a hard time unmuting myself. I was going to stall for you, Jenna. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm going to start my video, but I might turn it off because our uh, internet is not always dependable. So if it starts to get um, freeze at all, I, I might turn it off. Um, I have submitted written testimony. It's only a little over a page. It's quite straightforward. And rather than walking you through it, I thought that perhaps I would uh, just highlight a couple of elements of it and then provided some additional information and, and examples um, for you. So, um, so personally, I think that calling this act uh, chapter 11 is good because um, although most of these questions arose and issues arose as we tried to help districts uh, implement what you had enacted as Act 46, and actually as you, as you had enacted even earlier than that as Act 153 in, in 2010, um, it, it, these issues are actually all part of chapter 11 because the, the actual process that you, um, had the districts that were considering merger rely upon is the process that's set forward in chapter 11. And the details uh, about how a unified or union high school district would operate, those are also in chapter 11. So all of, all of those uh, issues rose to the surface during the implementation of Act 153 and Act 150 and Act 46, but they are all issues with Chapter 11. And the proposal that we've been working with um, Ledge Council on uh, is a total restructuring of Chapter 11 so that it is responsive to the issues that we've identified. So now just to back up a little bit to, to highlight some of the things that are in the, um, uh, the written testimony, Chapter 11, uh, which governs both the formation and the operation of union school districts was enacted in the 1960s and it was dra drafted primarily with union high school districts in mind. And I'm going to say union high school districts and just in your head think or union elementary school districts, but primarily union high school districts. Um, as of uh, 2010, there were only, only 20 percent of all of the school districts in the state were union school districts, and the vast majority of those were union high school districts. So for 40 years, um, we, our experience as a state was in overwhelmingly in creating and operating union high school districts. And most of those union high school districts had been created in the 1970s. So that, that, that experience wasn't even very fresh in many of our memories. So why is now the time to um, revise chapter 11? As I said, as we were helping districts to implement these, these re more recent laws, um, we started noticing that there were a lot of issues in, um, in chapter 11 as it's currently drafted. Remember that it governs both the, the creation but also the operation of union school districts. And while in 2010, there were only two union school districts that operated pre-K through 12, um, there are now 47 unified union school districts, uh, meaning that approximately 44% of all districts in the state are searching for answers on a day-to-day -day basis for how to operate. And they're looking in a statute that's confusingly drafted, has major gaps, and is structured in a way that it makes it very difficult to find the guidance that's needed, especially if you're a unified union school district. So when we, we identified these issues and we kept running lists and people who were involved in the field were keeping running lists of many of the issues. So when in, in 2019, we sat down with a number of other organizations and individuals. We, we talked with the Secretary of State's office with um, with the school boards association, the superintendents association, um, quite a few uh, uh, attorneys who had been very involved either in helping districts during the um, during the Act 46 process or who were advising uh, districts now. 
And we created an outline of how we thought chapter 11 should be structured if it was going to be as accessible as possible to the people who would be using it the most. And as, as um, Beth will explain to you in a little while, the, the major structure is um, that there are four, are four main sub chapters. The first one has some very general um, statutes, for example, definitions. The second is all about formation of a union school district. So it applies both to unified union school districts and to union high school districts. Um, and it's, you know, the, the study process, the, the voting, the, form, the initial formation um, details. The third subchapter is all about how to operate and what kinds of questions arise if you're operating a unified union school district. And then the fourth subchapter, which in many ways is very, very similar, if not identical to the third subchapter, but it's broken out so that if you are a union high school district and you're looking for those questions, the answers to those questions, the fourth subchapter is where you go for those operational details. Once that outline was created with the four major categories and lots of categories in between, um, we plugged all existing, the substance of all existing laws into the various places where they belong in the outline. And then we drafted language to fill in where that was missing. Um, as I mentioned in, in the written testimony, we worked very, very hard to ensure that the draft we made was a technical corrections to the extent possible. And whenever a new language or a new concept had to be addressed, we based it on common sense, on current practice, on what was expected um, from other entities. And having the Secretary of State's office involved was just incredibly helpful. Um, not only are they just delightful to work with, but they, um, they, they know how town government runs and they knew the kinds of issues that um, town clerks in particular might be concerned about. And so it was, it was wonderfully helpful having them be part of the process. Um, we have given Ledge Council a separate list. It's um, I'm three or four pages, I think, of policy questions, uh, which we did not attempt to address in any way in the, um, uh, in the draft. Uh, some of them you may decide you don't want to address, um, and others you might decide that you need to consider in more detail. Most of them are not going to be very controversial, probably. Um, but they got into policy questions. And as I said, we were trying very hard to create a document that was instructive and practical and wasn't, wasn't going out on a limb to be trying to presume that we could possibly be in your shoes and be making policy um, decisions. So I did wanna give you a, a, an example and there are, there are lots of examples um, to give. I, I think that the best place to start is that most of the issues um, regarding the operation of union school districts uh, under chapter 11 arise in connection with the election of board members and uh, in connection with voting in general. So as an example, proportional representation on a union school board um, can be met by three in, in three major categories of, of membership. And one of those categories appears only in the written decision of a judge in a federal court case. It's nowhere in statute, but it is a legitimate model of board representation. The other two categories are addressed in chapter 11, but different aspects of those categories of board representation appear in multiple different non-connected um, uh, statutes. Um, and there are frequent, frequent references to member districts. And as, as um, Ledge Council was talking to you before, um, while a union high school has a member district at the local level that can perform certain functions for it, a unified union school district does not have a member school district at the local level. So having constant um, uh, references to member school districts in the statutes can be very confusing to a unified union school district and also can sometimes be, in, even if you try to imagine what that might mean, it can be very inaccurate at times. Um, the statutes also do make some references, again, in different statutes to voting on the floor and voting by Australian ballot. And the statutes do also include some fairly re recent brief reference to the authority of local town officials 
to conduct some of the administrative functions that are necessary to conduct an election so that the town clerk can do certain things. Um, so you can try to imagine, if you can try to imagine a grid where all of these different pieces I was just talking about, and you think of all the different possible combinations you could come up with, if you're looking for an answer, you have uh, two different governance structures, one of which has member school districts that it can rely upon, one of which has a very brief reference to being able to rely upon the town officials to conduct some of those, um, those uh, activities. Um, second, you have two types of voting. You have voting from the floor, um, and also it would mean um, nominating from the floor uh, or voting by Australian ballot. And then you also have three basic categories of board membership. Uh, and I just will point out that there are some boards in the state that are using more than one of those types of board membership. Some of their, some of their board members are elected pursuant to one type of board membership and some of their board members are elected pursuant to one of the other types of board membership. So all of these categories, if, you, if again, if you think of this grid, all of these different possibilities arise not only when you're just going to elect a school board member, but they can arise in all sorts of situations when, um, when that's, that, that is related to, to elections and to voting. So uh, to whom is a petition um, nominating a board member submitted? Who writes the warning? Who publishes the warning? Um, who pays for the warning? Uh, you know, there, there are lots of details that it, it, the answer depends, depending upon where you fall in that grid that I was just talking about. Um, and that's, this is just one type of question it's, uh, that, that tends to arise. There, there are many other examples of trying to find an answer in the statutes, both for the formation and for the operation of a union school district, where it's just the detail isn't there. Um, it's confusing when it is given. And, um, and, and, and the answer is located in, in many different locations. So this was the level of practical detail that we attempted to address when we created what is a very long <laughs> rewrite of chapter 11. And um, we're very grateful that you are um, considering taking it up this session because we believe that it will be helpful to, as I said, 44% of the school districts in the state. Thanks. Thank you. It's helpful. Questions? I'm looking mainly to our board members. Um, Representative Arison. Yeah, I got a rather specific question. If a community has a school district, this happens to be where I live, but is also a member of a supervisory union, which we are, can that district vote the supervisory union's budget separately? Because right now it's rolled into the uh, district's budget. That's been asked of me quite a few times. It, Beth, is it okay if I answer or would you prefer? Please go. Um, so no, you can't, <laughs> they can't. That's one of the problems with a supervisory union is that it, it pulls those budget Terry decisions away from the electorate because it can only be um, uh, it can only be apportioned to each of the districts within the supervisory union. Part of the reason that it can't be it isn't just because you all have said no, it can't be. The reason that it can't be is that a supervisory union isn't an it isn't a legal entity. It's not a municipality the way that a school district or a town is. It's just this administrative um, you know grouping of districts that work together. And over the years, the legislature has given supervisory unions more and more responsibility, um, most recently and most significantly in the, um, the uh, provision of special education, which has meant that more and more of a district's budget is actually being deci decided at the supervisory union level and then apportioned where it can't be, it is only by voting, um, well, it's only by voting uh, um, it, it, that the locals have only the ability to, to vote the, the budget up or down, but then if they vote it down, the only thing they can adjust is those portions of the budget over which they have control, they can't adjust the supervisory union's portion of the budget. 
You hit on a very good point that the supervisory union budgets are starting to take a larger and larger chunk of the, uh, the municipal, or not the municipal, the school district's budget, and that's creating quite a, uh, a fuss, if you will. I just might say that that's part of the reason that I believe that some of the unified unions, one of, one of the benefits that some of the, the newly created unified union school districts saw the larger ones, because they are their own supervisory union, that budget, it, it, there is no distinction between. So uh, in, a, in a larger unified union school district that acts as its own supervisory union, um, they are voting, the citizens are voting directly on um, the, the items that a supervisory union would normally be responsible for. Thank you for that answer, because that allows me to, uh, when the question's asked to me, I can give a, a definitive answer. Sure. Let me know if you have any follow-up questions. I'm happy to help. Representative James. Ah, sorry, I was having an unmute problem. Um, this is a simple one. It probably should have been for Beth. I, I'm just wondering, what is a MUD? Okay. Um, okay, so 20, 2010 was when the first uh, uh, act, Act 153, was enacted that was trying to encourage, the legislature was trying to encourage districts to consider forming unified union school districts. There were districts that went through the process at the time, but discovered that uh, because every single district that wants to join has to vote yes in favor of, of of the, um, uh, of the merger into a unified union school district. Um, there were some communities that were finding that there would be a single um, district that uh, uh, voted no. And sometimes it could have been a very, very small district. So even though the vast majority as a whole wanted to create a unified union school district, a very small group was saying no. So one of the legislators from one of these, one of these communities suggested something that's called a modified unified union school district. And what it, which is referred to as a MUD, um, which uh, allowed, and, and it's a very odd situation. It allowed, think about there being a union high school district with, with five um, union elementary school districts, excuse me, a union high school district with five town elementary school districts that all feed into it. And, one of one of those town elementary school districts votes no, but everybody else votes yes. What is what is then created? And it was only allowed for a short amount of time. What was created was a modified unified union school district that was pre-K through 12 for all of these and was only the high school for the one that voted no. And the one that voted no stayed its own little um, union elementary school district. Excuse me, I keep saying union, its own little town elementary school district. And I do have a little diagram that kind of explains it. I don't have it. I didn't think to, to bring it to put it up, but I can provide it to you. Just, just give you a little pictorial of, of what it, it does. There were five of them created. And then as the process um, moved forward in the last couple of years, um, three of them became full unified union school districts. And there are just two modified unified union school districts that still exist. Thanks. Sure. <laughs> uh, Representative Austin. Yes, thank you, Chair Webb. Um, I'm just wondering if this assumption is correct that the rationale for the formation of these different configurations is to enhance local control. I'm trying to understand why it why we have these many different configurations, and I'm wondering if my assumption is correct. I don't think that's something that the agency can answer. That's something that you all need to discuss. Okay. And um, yeah, this is this is very technical about how to operate and and how to go forward with the with the options that you have provided. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Other questions? When the term MUD came out, it was actually uh, really helpful. It actually described our experience. 
as we were trying to sort through the, through the different definitions and, and mud ended up being one of the favorites. Um, I think without further questions on this, at this point, I'd like to turn to Kim Gleason, who's here representing the State Board of Education. Welcome, Kim, nice to see good you. Good morning, thank you, Chair Webb, and good morning to all of you. I, I simply wanna um, uh, support this work going forward. I have the good fortune of probably having worn a couple of hats very deeply impacted by this technical correction. Um, I formerly led the Essex Westford School District and prior to that Essex Town School District. And as we moved through unification, um, we are probably one of those real world cases that tapped on Donna Russo Savage's door many times in going through our unification and going from what was an SU and a town school district and multiple town school districts underneath the SU to a unified union school district operating pre-K through 12 and a large one at that. Um, but nonetheless, multiple towns, uh, separate warnings, appointments, and trying to find where we lived in the law with clarity was challenging. And so these technical corrections are really important to the field. And in the hat I currently wear on the State Board of Ed, we're collaborating really closely because we find ourselves in a challenging position as people are considering their requests for dissolution. And I think that there um, can be a more um, intentional process as there was to unification um, that we could um, seek some legislative remedy on the options available to towns and to the state board. But um, I was, um, Chair Olson asked if I would represent the state board in these matters and work closely with Donna and Beth and whomever else is appropriate to um, provide perspective and whatever hats I wear, but I'm certainly looking to remedy all of it um, and not to leave the major technical corrections behind if, if the more controversial matters um, take a different time or need to be addressed separately. I think um, hopefully it will all get done and I'm confident and grateful to all of you for taking it on. So thank you. There has been talk about actually creating two separate bills, one that is more policy oriented and one that is more technical. Emily Simmons? I think it's, thank you. I think it's important to point out here that the draft bill that Donna is presenting about today actually does not address the issue that um, Kim is alluding to. There are two sections of chapter 11, section 721 and section 724 that both address the dissolution and withdrawal issues depending on the type of union school district. And those two sections in the draft bill um, that the agency has worked with Ledge Council on are just represented by placeholders. The, in this vehicle, um, we haven't proposed any language or any amendment because those are such significant policy decisions that we knew to do anything um, that the General Assembly would have to take significant deliberation. And we do know that anything that brings up Act 46 um, can certainly be you know, a, a lightning rod. So, um, but we're, we're understanding that, that the districts are really asking for some of these technical changes to be addressed just to make their lives easier. While we're also looking at um, how we deal with the dissolution of, of districts that are looking to dissolve their mergers, which is also, uh, I know the state board is looking for some guidance because you don't have any at, at this moment in time, right? Very true, thank so you. So that will be just something that we do at least at this point, we now have Act 46 that has been in place um, for a couple of years, whereas it was not something we wanted to bring up a few years ago because everything was so raw. Um, so we will, we will be having a conversation on how we want to move forward with that. So, uh, do we have the bill to, this would be a committee bill. Um, do we have the bill to review today or is that for another day? I just got the um, full bill back from editing yesterday. Okay. Um, so I can send that to you today, Chair Webb. Um, okay. It sits at about 120 pages. 
I do have, um, uh, Donna was kind enough when we started working, when she shared the draft with us and we started working, um, Jim and I taking an initial look at it, uh, a table of contents, if you will, a kind of an outline. I do have that in draft form, if you'd like me to share that. That'd be great. Okay. I also have Donna's graph um, that she was referring to on MUDS. If anyone wants her, I'd be happy to share my screen if you want a visual. Um, but if we want to move on, that's fine too. I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. And I, I will also just ask the agency, I was just looking to see if I could find that fantastic map of our school districts that had the CTEs placed on them, that had the pre-Ks placed on them, that had the high schools placed on them, that it was, it was just a really great map. Um, post Act 46 map that at one point I think we even had posted in our room. I don't know if you found that one, Amanda, but it was a really great map. If you could send that um, to Amanda, that would be really wonderful. Uh, Donna, yeah. Sorry, I couldn't find my raise hand um, button. <laughs> um, this works um, too. <laughs> um, we do, we can send that map to you. We've had some problems uh, with the, I don't know if it's the software or the machinery or something to create the maps. So none of our maps are precisely up to date, but we do have the older maps that are quite up to date and we can send any of those to you that you're interested in. Right. So that would take us to 2020 or so, I think, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, maybe a little before then. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was um, it, it happened right about the time that we moved from Barrie to Montpelier, which was in, I think, October of, of um, 2019. So but it's, the districts had been defined by the state board at that point. Correct. Although there have been a few changes since then. So that's that's why they're not precisely up to date, but they're very close. Okay. But that's good enough. We'll, we'll take it. OK. Thank you so much. So um, Beth. Yes, just last call on mud representation. If anyone wants to see a visual, I'm seeing oh, no taker. Just do it. I would like to see that, please. <laughs> Donna, are you okay with me sharing that? It's the, uh, I believe it's- It's the fine. Video. Okay. So. all see my screen yes so and again please donna um i'm jump in if i muddle this um but this is the um when donna was referring to over here this is that little town district that voted no that sends its children only to 9 through 12 and maintains its own town district uh, while everyone else sends their children to essentially the unified union school district that operates PK through 12. Does that so help? This would be, I think, um, Wyndham, only I think they're pre-K five perhaps, are similar. Right. And uh, Lamoille North is also the other modified union school district. Um, the, the, where this becomes complicated is that there is only one school district for the entire modified unified union school district pre-k through 12 it's making decisions pre-k through 12 but town district d only is a member for 9 through 12 so it, you know both budgeting and policy decisions have the potential to be a little confusing um, and certainly involve or, or certainly necessitate uh, town district B board members from withdrawing, I mean, excuse me, from, you know, uh, not, not taking part in certain uh, discussions or, or votes. And this town district D, D could also be one that um, doesn't operate a, a high school, so they, they, they're on a voucher? No, no, no. They, they, they would definitely not operate a high school because they right. are a member of the modified unified union school district for nine through 12. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, thank you. Clear as mud. Okay. And um, I guess we can go to the next, to your outline, great. Sure, so this is, um, and I'm not sure what you all are seeing. Are you seeing the entire screen as this outline or can you see my background as well? I'm seeing, I'm seeing draft and I can see lines one through 14. Great. So 
Um, this is a, um, it's nine pages. So out of 120 pages, this is relatively high level, but you'll see it does um, get into, um, uh, it goes as far down as subdivisions in some of these um, sections. So uh, there's far more detail in the actual bill itself. This is meant to just provide um, kind of a, a preview, a lens through which to look at um, the work that we may take up um, and perhaps uh, a discussion point on how to tackle it um, should you so choose. Um, so uh, just a, a real quick walkthrough of this. Um, the first few sections in this um, draft are um, pretty, simple policy definitions and application of other laws and articles of agreement. Um, the, the meat of it starts in subchapter two, where um, it's broken down into exploring formation and organizing a union school district. And remember, union school district is that broad term that encapsulates um, union high school districts, union elementary school districts, as well as unified union school districts. Um, and you'll see how that's broken down as we continue on. Um, so uh, the first section is a proposal to form a study committee budget and membership, and it goes into um, detail about um, how committees are established, budgeting and membership, um, what that looks like for existing school districts, union school districts, and then even further, what that looks like for existing union elementary or high school districts who are proposing to form a unified union school district existing unified union school districts proposing to form a unified union school district and existing unified union school districts, uh, I'm sorry, existing union elementary union high school districts proposing to form union elementary union high school districts. So uh, it's, uh, the, and you'll see in detail as we continue on, uh, this draft bill really uh, is trying to contemplate every scenario possible um, in one place, uh, organized, so that if you are only interested in, in your situation, you're only looking in one place, you're not trying to piece that together um, over an entire chapter um, uh, in, in Title 16. It then goes on um, approval. So you've decided to um, proposal to form the study committee. What does the approval of the budget look like? Um, appointment of the study committee and participation. Um, and then that's broken down into all of the components um, depending on budgeting costs, um, subsequent appointments, um, formation, uh, formal participation in the study committee, additional formal participants, um, and informal participation by other school districts. Again, meaning to capture every possible scenario um, uh, that uh, the agency has encountered thus far. It goes into the study committee itself um, and talks about necessary and advisable districts. Um, again, when we do, if we take this up and, or if you take this up and we do a walkthrough, um, we'll get into far greater detail then. Uh, but this is meant to address um, who's going to be on that study committee, what does the process look like, um, and it breaks down uh, whether the school district involved is a necessary school district to forming it, or whether the study committee feels as though um, it's not a necessary school district, but perhaps um, an advisable school district, and what does that mean for your participation on this study committee. What uh, so. Study committee has made a proposal. Who reviews that? What does that look like? That's um, section 709. And then the vote to form a union school district um, in 710. And then we get into <clears throat> what Donna was uh, mentioning that we can spend as much time as possible with more visuals on because I do think it is complicated. Um, uh, talking about initial members um, of the um, district board. So uh, election, what does election look like and representation? Um, and then the proposed unified school district board, what Donna was talking about as far as the representation models uh, that exist. So there's proportional to town population, 
modified at large, um, an at large uh, representation. And you can see this is broken up by proposed unified union school district and then proposed union elementary or high school district again, so that if you are only interested in proposing a unified union school district, you only have to look at uh, subsection D. Um, and then uh, getting into the contents of the warnings um, and certification of votes. Um, and it's my understanding that the Secretary of State's office was um, a very active and involved um, member of um, uh, the group that reviewed and worked on this draft. Um, so I think that's, that's great that uh, there's a draft coming to you that already has input um, from the Secretary of State's office as far as the election process goes. Um, and then again, initial members of Union School District Board tallying the votes, oath of office and assumption of duties. Um, and again, this is for initial board members in that transitional phase before the um, uh, everything takes effect. Um, and then you've, you've formed a study committee, you've proposed it, it's been voted on. Um, there is a, a new district being created. Uh, what is, how do we organize it? What does the organizational meeting look like? Um, notice and the business to be transacted. Um, and then we get into um, transition, dissolution of the um, districts. So don't be, <laughs> don't be, um, we, <laughs> um, the, as, um, as Emily mentioned, um, this draft, and we'll get to it, does not take into account um, uh, members of a union school district who want to withdraw. Um, and we'll, we'll, you'll see the highlighted placeholder when we get there. This dissolution is meant to um, uh, dis, uh, uh, talk about the um, forming districts. So once you're, you're your own little standalone district or you're a union district and you're making forming with other districts to make a bigger union district, um, what does that look like? Do you have to dissolve? What does that transition look like? So um, the section devoted to transition to full operations, um, dates, roles and authority, assets, liabilities, unpaid expenses. Uh, se uh, section 717 addresses the dissolution, reorganization and discontinuation of forming districts. And again, it's broken up by the two types of union school districts. So you only have to look at that in that one place and you know it's good for you. Um, transfer of real property. Um, and then this addresses, um, what does that mean for your supervisor? This section 719 addresses, what does that mean for your supervisory union or your supervisory district? Remember supervisory unions and supervisory districts are created by the State Board of Education. And this section talks about adjusting those boundaries. Um, now you've created a new entity, a new um, union district. Um, how do you govern it? Article three gets into changes in union district membership and other amendments to articles of agreement. And again, it's, it's broken down um, into specific categories. So here uh, we're talking about joining an existing union school district, um, amendments to articles of agreement, Again, I think these sections without the actual text of the section, this is meant to just provide you the level of detail that this draft bill gets into. Um, what these subsections actually do, um, we'll tackle in, in depth when we get there. Um, but you can see that um, a lot of time and energy has been taken to address every possible um, question that could come up, process that could come up. Um, so that uh, those questions are already answered right in state law. Um, and then decision to vote by Australian ballot. Again, um, we can get into that in more detail when we do our walkthrough. I think these are the um, withdrawal, these are placeholder um, proposal sections for addressing the withdrawal um, or dissolution of a union elementary or high school district. And then from a unified union school district, um, those are right now, the conversation is around addressing that particular topic in a separate bill. 
And then subchapter three and subchapter, I'm going to skip down a little bit. So subchapter three is unified union school districts um, and, the, and the governance of them. Um, and then I'm going to jump down to subchapter four, union elementary school districts and union high school districts. These are essentially the same um, types of information, but just specific to the type of um, union school district contemplated in each subchapter. So unified union school districts, um, bo uh, board members, um, nomination and election, and then um, broken down in very specific information about what that election looks like um, and representation models for um, those boards. Um, it addresses vacancy, budget, and annual report, um, and then uh, keeps going into um, governance topics such as officers, warning for meetings, um, uh, voting uh, information, um, how are we counting the votes, um, bond issues and debt limit. And then the same information for union elementary school districts and union high school districts. How are they governed? Um, it's, it's almost exactly the same um, with um, uh, small differences here and there to account for the difference in uh, between a unified union um, school district and a union elementary or union high school district. Um, and then districts form pursuant to prior laws, laws. is the last subchapter, um, and it's a, a very small section um, of the bill. Uh, so that is a very, very high level, fast, not a lot of detail overview of what chapter, what this proposed rewrite um, proposes to do and the level of detail it gets into um, to address all of the issues the agency um, and the boards are facing in dealing with the governance of these different structures and the lack of clarity in current law. Is it fair to say that in some cases you're simply moving language from one section to another? Um, uh, there is definitely, um, there are definitely some sections like that, but I think, um, most of this is um, perhaps the concepts aren't new, but it being as, and Donna, please, Donna or Emily, please correct me if you think I'm wrong. Um, most of this, the technical nature of it and the detail of it would be new. Um, so the concept might not be um, new, but um, how detailed and specific it gets, um, you're not gonna find that in current state law which is, I believe, why this proposal is, is coming forward. Um, so uh, there will be a lot of new language to look at. So Donna, I, 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 I'm sorry, may I just add that even though the substance is identical in, in many places, um, the specific words used might not be the same. And that was because we tried to be extremely careful about word choice and to be really, really precise and consistent with word choice. Um, so, so even if the substance is identical, it won't necessarily look the same as what's in current law. Can, can you give us a, an example or two of some of the changes that we're likely to see? That I, think, I think that everything is basically is going to look different. The one thing I can tell you that does not look very different is the, the policy section, at the, which is the very first section of the draft and the very first section of, the, of this part of the chapter because um, uh, we didn't think that it was our, uh, our prerogative to be, be changing what you said about policy. It, it is changed a little bit. It was something that legislative council, both Jim and Beth discussed and, and chose to change a little bit, but, it's, but um, that will be almost identical. Um, everything, we, uh, when we first tried to do this, we tried our typical strike through underline and it was just such a mess that uh, it was impossible to follow because we, we changed the words and the structure so much. So there might be sentences that are almost identical to current sentences, but they're moved to different locations and they're, they're reordered uh, and you know, defining terms might be changed. So I could come up with some examples if you'd like, but I think that it's, 
it's so different that it's hard to make a, a, a comparison. I, I did provide, however, um, a, um, some information to Beth that says, for example, you know, in new section 705, this was, this was taken from the concepts that were in current section 701, 705, 728, so that, that you can, that you could go back and, and find where it's talked about in current law, if you chose to, in any particular new section. That will, when we get to a point, if we move this out and get it to the floor, that will be very important <laughs> to, to have that, that clarified um, and, and how, we, how we will address this um, will be a point of discussion. Uh, let's see, representative, who was first? Representative Conlon and then Arison. Uh, thanks. And um, first of all, this reorganization of everything is going to make this so much more user friendly. Uh, and uh, it's really going to be super helpful. So thank you for uh, diving in on this. Uh, the area where we just have, you know, basically a placeholder for the big discussion about withdrawals and dissolutions. Um, will we be getting any proposals from either the state board or the AOE, both on the stuff that's pretty tricky and controversial, but also I'm thinking about, you know, Union High School districts that were formed in the 50s to 70s. Um, would I assume a lot of the language that is currently guiding withdrawal and dissolution is probably still okay. Uh, but anyway, I just was curious to know if we're going to if we're going to receive some suggestions for what to put in there. I'd be happy to take the first swing at that one. So yes, it is the agency and the state board's intention to have a joint proposal specific for 721 and 724. Um, we're fine tuning our idea that, that we would put forward at, earlier, earlier today, we we're fine tuning that idea. Um, and it's a proposal that I think we'll be strongly recommending that we actually think is better than the approach in current law, but I can't forecast any more than that today. With regard to the more than purely technical issues in the full chapter 11 rewrite, we'll certainly either the state board or the agency or jointly be in a position to give you our opinion of what would work best. At this stage, it was really important to us to just come to you with the most technical bill as a starting place because the bill is so long, because there are so many issues and it's so complex, we didn't want to muddy the waters at all between what is what is purely technical and what starts getting into policy decisions before you had a chance to warm up the conversation. Great, thank you. And I'll echo all that sentiment on behalf of the state board. Thank you. Thank you. Donna Russo Savage. And in between that extreme policy decisions in 724 and the very technical aspects of um, of the, the, the draft that we are providing are, are decisions that are in between. And that is what I mentioned in the list of policy decisions. There are things that you might not want to decide. They are, for example, um, under current law, if a study committee proposes a budget of more than $25,000, it needs to get pre-approval from all of the districts that are going to be participating in the study committee. Is $25,000 still an appropriate cutoff point? We didn't feel as though that was something we should be deciding. So we put it in as current law because it is current law. And then we made a little notation on a separate document of this is something you might want to consider. And there are, there are many things like that that just aren't our it's not our call to make, but they are things that you might want to consider um, when That's you discuss. Really good to know that, that there will be notations because, yeah, we'll need to be sort of told, hey, these are the areas you guys should probably decide, not us. Thanks. <laughs> I'm probably going to be looking at uh, a couple of you to really take this on, um, to be really, really learn it and be the ones prepared to, to present it and to ask the questions and to keep us informed. Um, John Harrison, Representative Harrison. Thank you. Uh, my question is, uh, obviously the problems existed for a long time, and I'm just curious as to how long you folks have been working on this. It'll help my comfort level to know that this has been in the works for a long time, and the 120-page bill is going to be really hard to 
wade through. So um, I moved from Ledge Council to the Agency of Education in October of 2015 to try to be the nonpartisan person at the agency to help implement this law. So, um, and that was really when people were really starting to gear up to, to consider um, unification. I kept notes, all of the attorneys I worked with in the private practice kept notes, the uh, Secretary of State's kept notes. So we, we knew a lot of the problems going into this. And then it was beginning in probably late 2018, early 2019, that we started discussions about, okay, what would we do if we, if, if, if we could rule the world, what would we do? How would we change this? And that's when we came up with that, that outline of this would be the way to, to approach it in the most accessible manner. And then um, I did personally did a lot of the drafting just because I was used to drafting and I had, and I was being assigned to work on this, whereas everybody else had a lot of other jobs that they had to do. But we met many times the, the, the group of people who was, who were involved in this. Um, uh, they reviewed various drafts. We met and discussed them. We, we hammered out issues that we thought, you know, how, how to deal with issues. What, what was this too much of a policy decision or was this something we could decide? Um, it, it, you know, was this, was this, you know, a natural, a natural thing to put in here, not really a policy decision. So there was a lot of work. Most of it occurred in 2019. Um, and then there's been fine tuning since then, but most of it was in 2019. Thank you. We look forward to your guidance. And we talked about this in 2019 as something that was basically something we would be getting to, but that was the year that that state board had just finalized um, the mergers and it was pretty exciting. Um, there, was, there was a lot of controversy and upset. And then we hit the pandemic and it just wasn't the time, but it seems like right now, perhaps we're ready uh, to start to sort this out. And I'll be working, I'll be checking with the clerk and just looking at as well at how we might um, move forward on this. Other questions, Kim Gleason, yes. Thank you. I was just going to add again in the privilege of having served on a unified district that went through the process. There are some band-aids that have um, been put into place and that have sunsets that um, with the promise of this, of this rewrite, again, speaking from the hat of the unified districts out there looking to find answers and it, it sounds as though many of you may be experiencing them in your own communities um, and so some of the ways to get around some of these questions have been through um, band-aids that come and need um, to be updated every time there's a sunset and so I know the field will welcome this um, big body of technical correction to be able to find themselves in the law will be really helpful for these districts. So again, thank you for taking this on. And, and I think that um, to rep, uh, Representative Aronson's question, that is how some of this has been along the way needed to have been handled. And I'm, I'm grateful for Donna's capturing all of these challenges and working together with um, others to bring forward the bigger piece of work Thank you. Uh, we really appreciate you being here to help us through this process. And if this is something that you have an, an interest in diving into, I recognize this is um, 120 odd pages. Some of it will be um, pretty easy to follow. Some might have a few more questions. Um, some of it will be changing punctuation. <laughs> uh, some of it will, will be changing sentences or borrowing from another section. So it, it's, but if you wanna know more about governance, um, this will be a good place to, to do that work. Anything else? Okay, so um, I think we're okay at staying at a, I, I know that you probably have some things drafted and I, I, I just wanna have this conversation. So committee, you're ready to go with, with this. Is there anybody that says I don't even want to deal, don't want to even take this up? Everybody's ready to bring forward a committee bill to address these these changes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, I don't want them to start drafting 
if we aren't going to be serious about taking it up because that's a, that's a lot of pages. I'm, I, I heard it was 150 pages, so I'm feeling better. Um, so we'll, we appreciate that work and, and Ledge Council, if you can, I guess, get, get this started. Um, happy to work with you in any way that um, is easiest if we take things sections by sections or I'll, I'll just ask you to, to do what works best and is the least amount of um, busy work for you. So any questions or thoughts? Representative Austin. I just want to clarify, we're just focusing on the technical changes in this bill and not the policy changes and not the discussion about disillusion when a district wants to leave um, their district. Is that clear? I, I, would, I would assume that we're going to take up those questions as well. It's just a matter of where we want it to fit. And this is where I'm looking at the floor. Do I want to have a, a technical bill that is just technical and people are trying to bring policy in on a technical bill and they're not going to be allowed to because it's a technical bill? <laughs> um, or do we put the policy policy separate? It, it's just, it's complex in terms of how we manage it on the floor. And that's what I'm thinking because I want to make sure that we get this part through. And I know that we have a real need to address um, address some of the needs that were brought to us by the state board as they're trying to deal with the districts that are coming forward, trying to dissolve a merger. So it will be, I, I will say that, yes, this will be part of the conversation where we put it is, is uh, I don't know yet. The equity issue is really concerning for me. So I, I just hope we can have a conversation about that in terms of the policy issue disillusionment. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Please let me know if you, I, I'm, I'm afraid I'm looking at those who are our school board members <laughs> um, to help us in, in this as well. Uh, Kim Gleason. I was just going to say that it certainly is our hope. I don't, I don't want to confuse the matter by my old hat. Um, certainly in my responsibilities to represent the state board, it, we really do hope, and I, I trust and appreciate um, the decisions you'll need to make around timing and what goes when to ensure that it all happens. But we find ourselves without tools to really um, consider those things that come before us that seem to run counter to the intent of Act 46. And um, we need some clarity in that process that offers some analysis similar to that which went into these unifications when we are facing um, the challenges of with the tools available to us as a state board, our answers and where we come into the process is challenging for certain in that um, the process brings us in at the end and that is challenging. So um, I don't I don't want to get ahead of more detailed thought on those issues, um, but do know that we are thinking about them and those are among the things that we're collaborating with the AOE on um, and let us know when and where that feels like the right fit for your process. I will tell you that we, we will be looking at this and it is my hope that we will be able to come forward with, with legislation that will address that need. I'm just trying to figure out where we put it. <laughs> It's, it's not it's not if it's just where thank you so that's all we have for today um, so far I think um, we're hoping that maybe we can get a presentation um, tomorrow on act on, on the uh, act 59 task force I'm, we're still working on that Amanda and I are working on that. I do so want to thank um, Kim Gleason, the Agency of Education, our alleged council as well, for getting started on this important topic. I, I know that our, our school districts would really appreciate it. And I think now is the time to do it.